Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? I believe not. Do you? No. Do you? Yes. Okay, what are they? You're sitting up straight, so you've got one already, right? You should look at the person who's talking and sit up straight or have open body posture. Open body posture is crossed legs? No. No, no. Aren't you going to be a good listener then? There, now, this is open body posture. Shouldn't your legs be apart if they're open? Not necessarily. I did. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Not necessarily. Bring it on, and honey. I'm ready right right now. Position. Now, does that make sense, gives, what you just said? A cross-body position gives the effect that you are not open to what someone is saying. But when people's body positions... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. I'm going to make a sign and hold it up in front of you that says, stop when you get too wordy, and you just did. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? Apparently not. Apparently not. Oh, I don't think you do. You certainly don't have an open body posture. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? No. No. Do you? No, Miss Ellie. But you got a real open body posture, don't you, darling? I guess so. So you can learn, can't you? Now, getting right along. Your hand is still up. You still didn't learn anything, did you? Didn't I just say when your hand is up, you are thinking of what you're going to say instead of what's being said? Didn't I just say that? Yes, you did. And did you hear that? Yes, I did. And did you decide that you were just going to do it your way? I was Wait a minute, you were on a roll yes, there Yes, I did. Yeah, thank you very yes, much. Yes, I now, did. Now, since you choose to not listen to others, what do you suppose we're going to do where you're concerned? Not listen to me. Thank you very much. May now, I finish what now, I was saying? No. Because you're still thinking of what you're going to say instead of what I'm saying. Now, getting right along. I heard what you well, were every, saying. You're doing I it again. What you were you're saying. You're doing it again. I don't care. You're doing it again. It's wrong. You're you doing it again. Persecuted her for standing you're out. You're doing it again. Persecuted him for standing out. The only change that ever happens is when people stand out, and I am not my fault. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. Are you in any physical <gasps> danger here? Are you in any physical danger here? Is that girl in any physical danger here? Emmett Till was hanged by his neck after he was beaten almost to death simply because he said, made a statement to a white woman. Does he have a reason to be angry? Every time I do the exercise, there is a point at, at which I know I have made the point. And we could stop there, but you have to nail it down. And so it goes on longer than some people think it should, but you have to nail it down. People at this institution... You've made your point, you're right. Yeah, thank you very much. What is my point that I've made? <laughs> that I, you can't make generalizations about any place because there's racism everywhere. That's right. And while it may be... Uh-uh. <coughs> uh-uh. No. 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 You don't come back in here until you've apologized to every person in this room because you just exercised a freedom that none of these people of color have. When these people of color get tired of, ra of racism, they can't just walk out because there's no place in this country where they aren't going to be exposed to racism. They can't even stay in their own homes and not be exposed to racism if they turn on the television. But you, as a white female, when you get tired of being judged and treated unfairly, on the basis of your eye color, you can walk out that door. And you know it won't happen out there. You exercise the freedom they don't have. If you're going to be in here, you're going to apologize to every black person in this room. And do it now. I'm and sorry. the Latinos. Every there person is of racism color. racism in this country. Bullshit. No, you're not going to say, I'm sorry, there's racism. You're going to apologize for what you just did. I will not apologize because it it's Out. not a matter of race Out. always. Out. 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 Now, is she choosing to leave? Yes. 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 She could apologize and stay. I won't play or... the wrong game anymore. It's not going to hurt her. It's not going to hurt her to apologize. Yeah, let's talk about, about that. What's going on in this room alone? Once she leaves it, that's it. It's over with. Okay. They ain't gonna hurt her. Is it gonna hurt her? She, according to her action, it is killing, it's killing her. Yes. It's killing her.
killing her. But these people, they felt like it was somewhat traumatic. And I'm thinking, how is this so traumatic when they weren't cursed, nobody was throwing anything at them, they weren't hit. It, they were just getting upset over minor stuff that happens to us, on, that happens to us every day, but they don't realize it. One of our students left because she had the right to make the choice whether to stay or go. Students of color do not have the right to make the choice. Her walking out showed frustration, not only of her as a white person, but of many people of color. And I kind of think that, that, that if somebody didn't walk out, that it really wouldn't articulate what we want to do every day. We all want to walk out. We all want to get away from the problem, but we can't. You think she's learning anything in the hall? Probably not. Probably not. Did she choose then not to learn? Yes. Yes, because the learning situation is not one in which she feels comfortable or in which she feels secure. So what does she do? Leaves. Things uh -huh. are better than they were when I was 13. They're not as good as they were when I was 50. Now, I want you to take out a clean sheet of paper. Don't tear it out. Just turn over your, turn the page. On the top of the next page on your writing tablet, I want, at the left-hand side, on the top line, I want you to write the words, how they looked. Then I want you to write three adjectives describing how the people in the other group looked to you during this exercise. Everybody put your eye color, brown or non-brown, at the top of that paper. People in the middle put non-brown. People on the outside put brown. All right, now, leave three lines under your last adjective. Leave three lines and put the words, how I felt, on the next line. How I felt. Read yours. Uh, foolish, apprehensive, sad. Foolish, apprehensive, sad. How many of you were sad? Anybody sad? What were you sad about? Uh, that you would teach this in the way the matter that you chose that I would teach this in the manner that I chose. Kind then, of like, kind of like uh, fighting fire with fire. Yeah, but that works. When people go through this exercise, I see this happen every time. It's very similar to going through the five stages of grief. First, they deny that what I'm saying about them is true. Then they get angry. You've seen that happen. Then they go into the bargaining stage. Then they get depressed. Then they accept it and go along with it. What have you learned, honestly? I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that you can uh, compare the stages of loss to the loss of power. And uh, Does that sound logical to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, did that, is that what happened in here this morning? Yeah, I'd say so. Is that sick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that's sick. And if it's sick in this room with this many students, well, there's this out of here on a daily basis. I feel that you're making an assumption that that the, that the biggest hurt is through uh, black and white issues. And that might be true. However, I feel that, that there are those who have gone through a lot of pain and prejudice by not being black. It has nothing to do with a race issue, but has, every other, has to do with every other issue. And so it seems like you're, you're assuming that he has hurt more than I have simply because he, his, his issue is more prominent than mine. And Do I know what your issue is? No, I, no. Definitely. Do I know what his issue is? You're making the assumption that yes, but yes. you don't know his, his day to day. Carrie doesn't want to hear. I know how people, how people. Carrie wants, I think, that Carrie is determined to see this from her own agenda. And no matter how often you tell her, you have choice. People of color have no choice, Carrie. She can change her clothes. She can change her hair. She can change her ornamentation. People of color can't change their color. I think I have experienced enough of my, my own pain to be able to say that on the inside, how different could we really be? And I felt like when I was in the middle group, all of my previous experiences with judgment and prejudice, etc., were being invalidated. Stand up here. 
Can you stand up? Stand right here. Right, right there. Right. You stand right here. Now, do you folks see any differences here? <laughs> do you see any differences here? It's a perfectly yes. logical yes. question, yes. do you? Yes. What's the first one you notice? What? Sex. Sex. Is sex important to you? Let me put that in <laughs> Put that another way. Is it important to you that you're male? Yes. Yes. Why? I feel strong, powerful. Your gender is important to you. Yes. Do you want to be seen as a male? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you male? <laughs> no. Has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you black? Yes. Yes. How many of you see Rasu as black? <laughs> Did you know you were black before they said so? <laughs> is your color important to you? Very important. And your height is important to you? Yes. And why is your color important to you? It is who I am. It is who you are. Is it important for you that she sees you as you are, not as just like everybody else? Yes. Yes. When you say to a person of color, when I see you, I don't see you black, I just see everybody the same. People. Think about that. You don't have the right to say to a person, I do not see you as you are. I want to see you as I would be more comfortable seeing you. Uh, I wanted to make it clear to the class that the first thing we do see is black and white. Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad, but it's something that we have to come to and say and agree and just be open with it like, yes, he's black, I see it. Rasul came away with a knowledge of how the power system works. And that's extremely important. And I think with the knowledge that it isn't his imagination. We live in different realities, but when you deny what this person is going through or what this person is going through, you're denying their reality. We are as different on the inside as we are on the outside, and we have the right to be so. People don't deny differences. Accept them, appreciate them, recognize them, and cherish them. They are extremely important. I think the exercise does indeed make them more aware, and I think it does indeed make them to have them have allow them to have more empathy. I know it does. I think it changes the way they think about themselves and their environment. I think it changes the way they perceive others. I think it changes the way they perceive their own power. The exercise is over. You don't have to worry about your eye color anymore. And some of you still don't have to worry about your skin color but some of the rest of you do. So I can end this exercise. Or you can say, no, it isn't over for me. I will never forget this, and I will make something better happen because of this exercise. You can choose to do that, or not to. You have that choice. The thing is, you have that choice, and you have that choice, and I have that choice, and you have that choice, and people of color have no choice. They have to fight this battle every day. This is what I choose to do. This is what he has no choice about. I think they're going to make a difference here. This is the real world. And when they leave here and go into the so-called real world, I think they're going to carry that decision and that commitment with them. Because once you make a little difference, then that gives you that encourages you to keep on. I think that I see things completely differently now. I see, I see, I got to experience some of my own strengths and weaknesses. Um, I got to experience some of my sensitivities and at the same time, my ability to, to still stand up even though I felt like curling into a ball. At the end, I felt like I felt very powerful. My roommate has said to me, "You know, I've seen a different person in you. That you change a little bit. And like that, it is my duty to change society, and it is my duty to do what I have to do to make sure that my children don't go through the same shit that I've gone through my whole life." Every experience you have is is an opportunity to see yourself in a new way. And if you close your mind to that, if you say, "I didn't learn anything from this experience," and I say, "Sucks to be you," when am I going to quit? When racists quit, do I have a job for a lifetime? I'm afraid so.